turn to the person next to you and say, His mercy endureth forever. Shall we pray? Father God, who am I to stand before your people? Hide me and speak to your own people. Do not forget speaking to me too. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm told August is the Adventist Women's Month. We are special. I haven't heard of the Adventist Men's Month. Let me not start here. This month, as we embark on it, it is a month where we have been charged to take care of our sisters, to keep our sisters, so that at the end, not only of August, but at the end of time, we are all qualified to say, I am my sister's keeper. It is my wish that every month becomes a woman's month. You are going to see why. We have so many roles. We have so many responsibilities. Not that men, you have less. But women were just created in a beautiful fashion, amen? amen. And with them came the manual which was never to be revised. Because since Adam and Eve were joined in the Garden of Eden, God never revised marriage. God never revised the home. It stood and it's still standing. Which means if we were in football, women were like that last substitute who is kept when things are getting tough. And you see the coach saying, come on, Lyndon, finish the task. Lyndon will be carrying the coach's last message. He knows who to go and mark. He knows he has only one aim, to win. Women, I hope I'm saying the truth about you. And I hope that there will be no brother who will say, hi, Ma. Were you talking about women or about men? <laughs> As a mother, it can be very frightening to stand up and fight for your own daughters then find your own daughters at fault. So may I put a disclaimer to the keepers. You will know yourselves in a minute that we are human. Someone saying just because I'm a woman, but that doesn't make us weak. We are meek. Today, I've entitled my sermon, Play on the Harp. For all you remember, the harp was used long time ago. I was surprised that it's still being used even today. And it's producing calming music. But I want to go to a particular chapter which we are going to be hopping in and out. And that is First Samuel, chapter 16. I want you to zoom through the whole of the chapter because I'll be referring to it as I go. But I'm going to read in your presence, verse 23. Whenever the evil spirit from God bothered so David would play his harp. Saul would relax 
and feel better. And the evil spirit would go away. Amen? <laughs> I know someone is saying, so we is so, so we is David. <laughs> Especially when we are talking about women. No. For now, I don't want to attach gender. I want to attach the keeper and the kept. Then I will maintain the peace in the congregation. It is significant that there was a need. So was he having a moment where God had just tickled him to show him his power. But Saul could not get himself out of the moment until David had to be found. In a way, in this particular verse, can we take David to be the keeper? And can we take the kept to have yet a need? Follow me through. Before I go into my sermon, I have two disclaimers. The first one is, organizers, you are very unfair. This sermon should have come before my membership was confirmed. <laughs> we say what we want and leave because I don't live with you. <laughs> then when you have to preach at the church where you will see people next week, and most probably have caused an argument in a house or two, to say, did you tell mom about what she was speaking about. I want you to know, mommy knows no one. I only pointed elder Lyndon because the website said he is the uh, head elder. I only know, <laughs> I only know Sandra because she's a elder. So whatever name I'm going to pick on, whatever story or analogy I'm going to use, it doesn't belong to voice of hope. Amen. Disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two will come in the summit of a story. I have a spiritual daughter. It is going to be a funny story. She was of age, like we have our daughters here. And then she had an elder who was eyeing her, you know? We were very sure that something is going to happen. For us as mothers, we're almost asking for the color scheme. <laughs> and then we asked, can't he? What happened? And then, this is no offense to Marka Pito. It's coming. And then she said, nothing happened. Said, ah. But this is Lindy Gepe. She looked at me. I am the mother, the spiritual mother. And she said, No, it's not going to be a wedding. I said, Why? She said, Because the elder comes from Malawi. And I said, So what? That's why I said, Sister Capito is coming. <laughs> then I said, what now, my daughter? I like the Malawis, they are the best in laws. And then she said, I learned it when I was doing my degree that when someone ages, they revert to their mother language, which they learned <laughs> at birth. I pictured my own wedding and saw myself living with someone speaking a language I cannot understand. And so I said, no. So the wedding did not happen. Looking back now, I'm saying, voice of hope, if you hear me regress into, <laughs> into tongues, blame it on edge. Who is my sister? 
turn to the female next to you and say, are you my sister? <laughs> Even the one you call a wife, ask, are you my sister? <laughs> Elder G, ask him. <laughs> what is a sister? A sister is not only a biological sibling who is female. It is more than that. She represents a nurturing, close bond. A sister can be found in family, in friendship, and in the community. And in our spiritual circles like we are today, She's someone who will share the life's journey, offering support, understanding, and companionship. Do we have sisters in VOH? Raise up your hand if you have had a sister who meets that qualification. Amen. I'm speaking to sisters. A sister stands by you in terms of joy, in terms of sorrow, and provides encouragement and helps you to grow spiritually and emotionally. Are the hands still the same? I'll try to use sister as an acronym. I said, what would sister mean? A sister should be supportive. A sister should be inspirational. A sister should be a source of strength. A sister should be trustworthy. I'll stop there. When someone is trustworthy, they are dependable, they are reliable, and they can be a confidant. Life is made up of so many things, joyful and not joyful. A sister is not just a female body walking next to you. A sister should be someone we may we call a confidant. When someone is your confidant, I can tell them the worst of my life and I will not hear it next door. A sister will be empathetic. A sister will be respectful. If they don't qualify for the above six, they are not sisters, they are six. Are you a sister? Are you surrounded by sisters or sibs? If we are sisters, why do we have so many suicides in church? If we are sisters, why are our children running away and tell, not telling the church what's happening to them? The art of not being a sister and being a sieve has killed the SDA church. Our children can no longer confide in us even for us as mothers because they know it before the end of the day my story will be all over. I didn't want in the introduction for you to know what I'm doing. The first part of the paragraph is what I wanted the girls to read. Whatever they read about me, I don't know where they took it. Because I do not want you to know that sometimes I listen to stories. I listen to church trauma and say, do I belong to this church? We are starting a month where God is calling you and me. It's not only calling sisters, it's calling even brothers. Because as you are seated next to your wife, my dear, you are keeping a sister. You are keeping someone else's sister. You are keeping someone else's daughter. Are you a keeper? Ask yourself, you will not turn to the person next to you. Turn to their heart. And ask yourself where you have been a sister and where you have been a sieve. But then what is a keeper? In the context of relationships, and community, it's someone who takes responsibility for the well-being and care of others. 
I know the moment I said keeper, many were thinking of goalkeepers. <laughs> Let's go with your thought. What does a goalkeeper do in Ghana? He keeps uh, ball from going in or So he protects. Yes? Tick. What does the goalkeeper do? I have seen him clap at the team. What is he doing? He's motivating him to courage. I have seen the goalkeeper tell the striker where to stand. Because he knows the blind spot of a goalkeeper. I have seen the goalkeeper say, no, let me take the penalty kick myself. When mentoring has failed, so a keeper is a mentor. I have seen keepers cancel. I have seen keepers being caregivers. I won't repeat the confidant. Otherwise, I will overpeel the potato. The other faces of a keeper. A keeper can come in as a friend. You know, when we want someone to talk, we we'll befriend. Let me tell you, church, you cannot keep someone if you are as fierce as you. If your title walks in front of you more than yourself. If your CV is the first one to enter into church before mama comes in, you already know that this one here, our colleagues are. Ah, ah, ah. You cannot keep. A keeper is an advocate. I have seen murderers go to sleep and sleep soundly because they have a good advocate. And they have come out, not that I'm advocating for the wrong, but I hope you hear what I'm saying. A keeper is someone who can stand for the sister and say, no, not my sister. But what type of keeper do we have? You're talking about this, Jay. Ah, hey, hey, hey. You haven't started. If I tell you what I know about you. But the keeper we are. A keeper leads. You just find it in yourself to lead. Because you are a keeper. You don't want the people whom you are leading or you are keeping to go astray. A keeper is a role model. Yo, it's very difficult to be a role model, and it's very difficult to be living a public life, but every one of us is a role model, which means whether you are on social media or you are away, you are very public, because right now there are more than 400 eyes who are looking at you, so what is it that is private about it? is a spiritual guide. I have had sisters and brothers who when someone calls for advice, instead of telling me for advice from our Lord, they tell him, I try this. I will do this. In advocacy for them. A a keeper is also a peacemaker. <clears throat> you look out for others, ensuring their safety and their health and well-being. It involves a deep sense of commitment and duty towards those whom you are keeping. Are you keeping? What are the examples of the keepers we have around us? I will discuss on this, but I have detailed the organization. Everyone is a keeper. <laughs> so turn even to the brothers. When they had my sister's keeper, they might have thought it's not, that doesn't involve us, does it? No, everyone is a keeper. Are you a parent? Are you a sibling? 
Are you a spouse? Are you an in-law? Are you a friend? Are you a leader? Are you an employer or an employee? Are you a community? And when I say community, who do I mean? The people we pass every day, even the beggar on the street is your sister. The people we meet at the shopping center, they are what? Sisters. And we have to keep them. But there is a paradox between sisters and keepers. Let me go towards sisters now. The paradox between sisters and keepers is that the very same sister we are seeking to keep is also a keeper. Understood? I may be talking to you like I'm mentoring you. Yeah. I may be looking like a keeper. If I turn my back yeah. and now go back into my life, I must be kept. Do you see that? So whatever the keeper is expected to do to the sister, the sister should in turn be able and be willing and forthcoming to do even more for the other because they know how it feels. So my disclaimer about if you find that my daughters do not do, yeah, we, I will have taught them. them, them. What I mean is, there is a dynamic between the keepers and the kept. One day I am the keeper, the next moment I am the kept. It depends on who I am speaking to. So, sometimes I sound very, very antagonistic against some of, say, the feminist ideas. Because some of what we expect people to do to us is exactly what we should be doing to the people. The moment we learn that, the peaceful the world will be. Let me touch the kept. Who are the kept? Today, because <laughs> you who pays the piper calls, the tune, I have been hired by the sisters. I will say the kept are the sisters. What is we to say about the kept? I hate the idea of approaching, keeping a sisters as if we are pathetic, we are not. You heard me? Women are not pathetic with things which await mercy only. They kept need respect. They need to be recognized. They need to be felt while well, they are being kept. We understand that. But at the same time, I can, this jacket is reversible. Me as the one who is being kept, <laughs> I have a little test here. Anyone who grew up in the, in the rural areas like me, Emma Pandel, whoever looked after cattle, you see, <laughs> yeah, you are rich. Which is the most difficult domesticated animal to keep if you take them out? Who knows? I have a little present. Which is the most difficult? We have so many domesticated animals. We have donkeys, we have cows, we have sheep, we have goats, we have cats, we have dogs, we have chicken. Which is the most <laughs> difficult? A goat. Thank you, Elder D. I'll give him the book which I call authors. Permission to flourish. Why is a goat difficult to look after? Huh? Let me see the, that knowledge which you thought is not going to be useful, Elder D. It doesn't settle in one place. It doesn't settle in one place. You bring it to green pastures, ne? 
it jumps and it goes and it goes not only to other green pastures, to thorny bushes where it will struggle to put it in the mouth in between the thorns and be pricked. Sisters, don't be God. We want to be, we want to be kept. Ne? Have you ever seen mothers? When they discipline, they start with their own. Yours is coming, boys. I'm just saying, sometimes it becomes so difficult to keep someone, be it for the community, be it for the family, be it for the husband, be it for the siblings. That someone, the moment you try to keep, to pick them, <laughs> I was very glad when I found this little fruit. Who knows it? Eh? Uh, yo, I'm speaking to the generation of today. Who knows this? It's very nice to eat, but it has thorns. It's like a rose. For you to enjoy the smell of the rose, you have to go through the thorns. So if you want to be kept, please don't be a rose, don't be this fruit. Wait and give chances to those who want to help you. I'm talking about the kept. Ne? Some of us listen just to answer as sisters. And before someone goes on, You sleep. So sometimes the mission, because it's God's mission to keep their creation, is distorted because the kept cannot be kept. But at the same time, let's go to keep us beyond sisterhood. Keep us beyond sisterhood. Denote everyone around you. I've just spoken about one keeper of self. It's yourself. Apart from God, the first keeper of a sister is yourself. Don't attack me. That's why I said, why did my membership come after me? Before this, I was going to run away. Because sometimes what we claim is what we can do for ourselves. We want to be helped. We want to be kept where it's necessary, but we don't want to be made useless. Then we have everyone around us. Every one of us, you can label whatever you want from our children, from our husband, from our family, from our co-workers. They are our keepers. And when they keep us, we clamor, we, we, we deserve compassion, patience, support, and being respected. Amongst those who can keep, let me talk about the husbands, being keepers of elder sisters. The art of keeping. You can put on the next slide. I'll start with the thorny issue, the art of keeping. Firstly, when you are trying to keep someone in the left hand corner, which is your right, there is someone on a ladder unlocking someone's and the other one is giving them love to put in their brain. When someone is being kept, there is a need. And call it love. Whether it's clothing, whether it's food, whether it's what, they just need love. Ne? Then Titus hammers on our Mama J, Mama Capito, Mama Dorothy. Titus too. And said, the older women keep the younger sisters. Are we doing that at VOH? 
our daughters testify for us. If we are not doing it, let's improve. Let's improve. The Bible says we, the older women, should water the gardens in Sandra's head, in Samuel's head, so that they love their husbands. In terms of keeping, everyone does have a role. Sometimes keeping denotes the Minister of Presence just being there and listening. So why are we afraid of keeping? Just to go and say, I am here. Sometimes when someone comes to you, their mind is just like this. This one, I thought I was going to put it in sand, I forgot. But if I were to say, find the starting point, not this one, the way you started, can you? It takes someone who can listen. Sometimes what we need as sisters is just someone who will tell us we are still okay. And as they are talking, number four on the chat, as an elder, me, Mama J, I am unwinding the wool. So as we see you coming, I can see your Tanan is having a hard time. The wool is just whatever it is. And all it takes for you to keep that sister in your silence is that. And then at the end you say, it will be okay. Do you know when it comes from a mother that it will be okay? Even if she wanted to file divorce the following day, she will settle and wait for your okay. Being a sister's keeper is listening even to our teenage children. If someone was around Tama, she would not have been raped. No one was around Tama. When we listen to those around us, to our children, to our sisters, we listen even to unspoken conversations. Keep us, look out, ne? look out for signs. Children are suffering in the eyes of the keepers. We will be present and yet we are not keeping. Are you keeping your daughter? Do you know exactly what's happening to her? Have you ever, I met a mother who cried 36 years after the rap, when the daughter opened up that daddy was raping me. Be your sister's keeper. Being a sister's keeper is understanding them in their own loss and in their own pain. The loss may include losing their marriage, losing their husbands, losing their children, losing their job. Are we there to listen? Oh, when someone becomes an adult single in church, we avoid that sister. Let me touch a bit about the adult sisters who have gone through trajectories of pain. Some of the traumas they are facing are here in church. My sons, I want you to listen to this. It was only boys who can wake up at 12 midnight and see a completely dressed woman at his feet and leave them without sinning. If you were put to the Boas test, would you pass? Keep a sister. Before Boas even married Ruth, 
He tried the next of kin who was in line to marry Ruth. I don't hear that being preached so much. If he had dealt with Ruth that night, do you think that you would have suggested another husband? No. My sons, respect your sisters and take the correct way. Husbands, you have your sister called a wife. I love Adventist husbands. I was joking with my husband just this morning and saying, love me the way Christ loves the church. Amen. <laughs> Where are you? I'm not hearing the bus. You should love your wives the way Christ loved the church. And the same Christ represents the Lord our Father. And David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Eh? Where is Sandra? Can you, you say Clive is my husband, I shall not want. We are not doing family life. Some of you cannot even provide a need for the sister. No let alone they want. And then when someone greets their sister in a tone they have never yet, they triple and fall and they don't go to heaven because of you. Please do your duty. And when you do it, do it thoroughly because you are affecting us, our mothers. Your wives then hate us because they think we don't teach you the right things. And yet we love our woman, Lucas and Abed. Our sons, please take your roles. Love your wives. Take responsibility. Understand your wife's cues. Huh? If ever there's anything which disturbs a woman, it's not to be heard, let alone being seen. And we speak in languages, even our facial expressions are languages. Understand us. I will leave it, I, lest I get sent away. Society and community, let's listen to the sisters. A story was written in the Bible about Elkanah and his sons. Everyone in church was watching Phineas and Hopney do what they were doing. And because they were PKs, no one dared to help. How do you think Phineas and Hopney's wives were feeling? Uh, was anyone going into their minds until the day Ophni and Phineas died and Elkanah dropped dead? Then the poor daughter-in-law let out her emotion, early labor, for a child and called him Ichabod. Check the names in your children around your life. Some are Ichabods. Your wife is not talking. They have no way to talk to you. I will leave it there again. Church, every one of us here is a Hannah and a Penina moment. We are not in polygamous unions, but even the way we treat each other here at church sometimes leaves the other sister feeling like a Hannah. Watch yourself and check your Penina syndrome. Check your moments and please, please, I beg of you, please repent. Every one of us has had a Penina moment. Just let me ask you when you were dressing, who were you thinking of coming to church or maybe how will people see me? Everyone, including me, has had a penina moment. It doesn't need you to be on someone's husband. It needs you to be a sister's keeper to know that I'm not being a penina. Then, keeping the keeper, I'll just say, when we keep the keeper, we are talking of the sister who is kept too. 
Remember, we said the keeper is the kept. So, sister, when I'm talking about keeping the keeper, I'm talking to you as a, keep, as a keeper and as a sister. Self-care is not selfishness. The word no does not mean on. When it's too much, say no. I'll pass. There isn't a woman in the Bible who God used, but had it is. Ruth didn't have it is. Esther didn't have it is. Sarah didn't have it is. Hannah did not have it is. Mary did not have it is. What about Rahab? What about Mary Magdalene? Can we go down the list? Do you want to be used by God? Sisters, before we clamor for being kept, know that it's very normal what you are going through. Our predecessors who made it faced a lot of difficulties. You are going through a test. And in our mind as keepers, may we make it easier for all the sisters. I hope today, when you look at a sister next to you, when you look at your mother as a sister, if I may test the in-laws, what size does your mother-in-law wear? Both boys? Simple test. a woman from today, think of how they need to be kept on their own terms, in their own needs. And remember, husbands, <laughs> you represent Christ. Your wives should not want. May God bless you.